Welcome back to another video and if you're new here my name is kate i like to make clothes here on youtube so subscribe if you want to watch me make more things and also turn on the notification bell so you know when i post the next tutorial this skirt is perfect for the beach or a pool day it is made to measure so you can adjust the length and size and once you get the lace shell stitched down i encourage you to play around a little bit and see what you can come up with i'm here to guide you so let's get started you're going to need some worsted weight yarn. I used cotton yarn and I used around 300 meters for this skirt. Five millimeter crochet hook. Some stitch markers. You'll need five and then one different color to signify the beginning of your row. I always just use bobby pins because I always lose all of my stitch markers. A tapestry needle. Scissors. A tape measure is optional, but you can always just measure it on your body if you're making it for yourself. Also optional, but I like to have something to write down my rows just in case I lose track. First thing we want to do is we're going to take our waist measurement and don't worry if it's not perfect because we are going to be doing a drawstring at the end so it should be pretty adjustable. So I measure at the hips because that's where I want it to sit. You can also measure it up on the waist but you're just going to want to make sure that it fits over your hips. That's kind of like the number one thing. Other than that the drawstring should be adjustable and if you don't have a tape measure you can just measure it on your body. I find that's maybe easier but sometimes if you're like in public or something it can be kind of weird. <laughs> First things first is we're going to make a slip knot. Then we're going to insert our hook and pull tight, but not too tight. So we're going to start out with a half double crochet foundation chain. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, so I'm going to link a tutorial down below for you guys to watch. But if you just need a refresher, I'll show you very quickly. The alternative to this would be to just chain and then work half double crochets back into that chain, but I really encourage you to try this foundation chain because it gives it a little bit of stretch, which is perfect for skirts or anything with a waistband that you need to fit over your hips. First thing you're gonna do is chain two. One, two. And then see that first space we have from our slip knot? We're going to yarn over and then insert our hook in that space. Then we'll pull up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over, pull through the first loop on our hook, and then yarn over and pull through all three. And then we're just gonna repeat that. We're gonna go back into the previous loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over and pull through all three. I'll do it one more time. Yarn over, insert through the previous space, Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through all three. And then we're just gonna repeat this until we get to our waist measurement. I finished my foundation chain, so this will count as our first half double crochet row. I chained 88 stitches and pause what you're doing right now, count your stitches and make sure that it's a multiple of eight. And that will make a little bit more sense once we start doing our shells. And if you're not at a multiple of eight, I would chain up to a multiple of eight rather than take some stitches out because the drawstring will make it more adjustable. You'd rather have it be too big than too small. So now we're gonna join in the round and then start our waistband. We're actually going to be working our half double crochets into the side of the foundation chain that our loop is coming out of. We're gonna join in the round, so make sure you line up those sides together. We're going to be working into the stitch that's on the opposite side of where our original yarn tail is coming out of. This probably isn't the best way to do this, but I just did a slip stitch to connect these ends together and then I kind of weaved in the yarn tail to make it seamless, but I kind of messed up. It doesn't look great. So do this method at your own risk, but I think it works out fine and you don't really notice it. If you're a perfectionist, I apologize. And then I'm just going to place a stitch marker at that stitch. And then what we're going to do now is two rows of half double crochets. And I'm assuming that you guys already know how to do the half double crochet, so I'm just going to skip over this part. I will, of course, down below link a basic stitches tutorial. So, yep, you're just going to half double crochet for two rows. Yeah. 
So I finished the waistband and you can make it thicker if you want, just add a couple more rows of half double crochets, but this is just my personal preference. We still have this end here, so I just went ahead and weaved it in. Looking back at this footage, I actually weaved this in so bad, there's like a huge hole, but if you want it to look a little bit nicer, I would take a little bit more time on this than I did, but I just kind of wanted to get it out of the way, so that is just how it's going to look. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with a single crochet. So pull up a loop and then pull through both of them and then put our stitch marker back on that stitch. And that is to signify the beginning of our row. Then we're gonna chain two, skip three stitches, one, two, three. And then we're gonna do our first lace shell. And to do a lace shell, we're gonna start with a double crochet. And then we're gonna chain one and then do another double crochet in that same space. Now we have two double crochets in that space, and then chain one and do one more double crochet in that same space. Okay, and then in between our shells and our single crochets, we're always gonna be chaining two. So I chain two, now I'm gonna skip three stitches again, and then in the fourth stitch, do a single crochet. Chain two, skip three stitches again and then do a lace shell which is a double crochet chain one another double crochet in the same space chain one and then one more double crochet in that same space and then we're gonna chain two again as you can see we're gonna be working in these repeating units so we've already done two but the start of the unit is gonna be the single crochet so that was the first stitch in our unit. Now we're gonna chain two and then skip three stitches. Then we're gonna do another lace shell, double crochet, chain one, another double crochet, chain one, and one more double crochet. And then chain two and skip three stitches, one, two, three, and then this will be the start of a new unit. So as you can see, each of these units, like I was saying before, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches, which is why we wanted to work in multiples of eight. So I'm just gonna continue to do these all the way around. One, two, three. So we're now at the end of our row. I just did that last shell and chain two. As you can see, I have one extra stitch here, which is fine. You won't even notice. If you do have an extra stitch, just skip it. And what I do to finish off the row is I just slip stitch into the first single crochet that we did. And we can ignore that there's an extra stitch there. Once again, I am a messy crocheter, so I apologize. Hopefully this video can convince you that you can make a few mistakes and it will be okay. So now to start our next row, we're gonna start by chaining four. One, two, three, four. And the reason why we chained four here is the chain three is gonna count as a double crochet, and then the fourth chain is gonna be the chain in between the two double crochets. So now we're gonna do a double crochet in the same space, and we're only gonna do part of a shell on the first stitch of the row. And that just makes it look a little bit more seamless. So we're gonna finish that shell at the end of this row. So we always chain two in between, and then as you can see, we have a shell here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our single crochet in the middle stitch of the shell. See how there's three double crochets? We're gonna do the single crochet in the middle. So single crochet there, and then of course chain two again. And then now at our single crochets, we're gonna be doing lace shells. So double crochet, chain one, another double crochet in the same space, chain one, and one more double crochet. Chain two, and then at the top of the shell, we're gonna do a single crochet. Chain two, at the single crochet, we're gonna do a lace shell. 
and we are just going to repeat this pattern all the way around. I'm hoping that the stitch chart in the corner will help you out a little bit or else I'll link a bigger version of it down below. But like I said, this does become muscle memory so you'll get a lot quicker at it as you keep doing more rows. And if you do need help or want to do this at your own pace, of course, pause the video, rewind it as many times as you need. I'm going to put timestamps and then I'll also label the section in the corner so you can skip around as you please. Hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier for you. But for this portion, we will just be repeating this lace shell stitch pattern. We are coming up on the end of our row. There's a shell here, so we're going to do a single crochet. And then we have to finish up the shell that we did in the beginning of the row. To do that, we're going to chain two. And then in this space where the partial shell is coming from, we're going to do a double crochet. Chain one and then slip stitch into the top of that original chain three we did at the beginning of the row. It might be a little bit tricky to get your hook in that space, but we'll just pull up a loop and pull through. See how that makes a completed shell? It looks a little bit more seamless than if you were to just start off with the shell in that space. And we're also now in the middle of the shell, which is exactly where we want to be for our first single crochet of the next row. And now we're going to be repeating this shell stitch pattern until we have 10 rows of the shell stitch. So we've already done two and now we need to do eight more. So in the beginning of the row, we're going to start with a single crochet, chain two, and then we can also move our stitch marker back onto where we just started the row. Now we're going to do a lace shell. Now we're at the beginning of our row again, so we started with a single crochet, so we're just gonna slip stitch back into that single crochet. Sometimes it might be hard to like see, but you can like backtrack it from this stitch. So this is our single crochet here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slip stitch. Right there. So since we started with a single crochet on the last row, we're gonna start with a shell on this row. So like we did before, we're gonna chain four, two, three, four, and then double crochet into that. And I will let you guys take it from here because I'm confident that you guys will get this stitch down and cruise through these next eight rows. Rewind and pause where you need to. I'll also leave some resources down for you in the description if you need a little bit of extra help and you got this. If you wanted to do a very straight skirt, you could literally just do this pattern all the way down and it'll be more tight fitting. I'm gonna do about 10 rows of just the regular shells with no increases and then I'm gonna come back to you and I'll show you how it increased and flared out a little bit. Today on Instagram, I asked people what their favorite movie slash TV show is for fashion inspiration. So now I have so many new things to watch. Um, I haven't really been watching anything recently. So I'm excited to watch some of the movies and shows that people suggested because I need a little fashion inspiration as well. We're gonna take a quick break from the video to talk about these glasses that I received from Hip Optical. They have eyeglasses, sunglasses, tinted glasses, and readers, and all of their glasses are just $99, including prescription lenses. I ended up going with the Kira frames in the bongo colorway, and I know they're a bit extra, but I just thought they'd be so fun to style. They have a team of fashion designers that design custom styles to match the latest fashion trends. Personally, I don't wear prescription lenses, so I decided to just go with the blue light lenses, and that helps with eye fatigue from being on my computer all day. But if you do wear prescription lenses, it is so easy. You pick a frame, select your prescription, and then choose the type of lens that you want, and that's it. 
The HIP team will contact you after your order and ask for a simple photo of your prescription. And the glasses will arrive in just a few days. I think mine took like two days after I ordered them. All of their glasses are made here in the USA in their lab in Florida, and they include ultra thin lenses for free. And my favorite part is that HIP Optical is partnered with Restoring Vision, a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing eyeglasses to those without access. And they will donate one pair of glasses to someone in need for every pair of glasses purchased on their website. They use a plant based premium acetate material to manufacture their frames and include heavy duty spring loaded hinges to ensure that your glasses last and fit perfectly. Hip Optical knows that buying glasses online is hard if you can't try them on so they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. Visit the link in my description to claim a free pack of premium lens wipes when you order a pair of Hip Optical glasses using the code KATE K -A -I -T, and please note that this offer is only valid for 30 days. Let's get back into the video. All right, so I've done my 10 rows. If you just want it to be a straight skirt, like I said, just have it go straight down. But for the mini skirt that we're doing today, um, I'm gonna do 10 rows and then on our 11th row, we will start the increases. But play around like how many rows you do between increases, maybe if you make the skirt twice. If you were doing a little bit of a longer skirt, I think it would look better if you did more rows without increases and then increase it further down the skirt just so it doesn't increase out too fast. I'm trying it on with these shorts so you can picture how it's gonna flare out a little bit, but it's not gonna be exactly like the shorts. It's just kind of a visual thing. So my skirt is sitting lower on my hips, but if I wanted to tie it up higher, I could with the drawstring. That's what it's looking like with my basket of yarn. All right, it is now time to do our increases, and this might be where it gets a little bit confusing for some people, but I'll try to explain it the best that I can. Also, it doesn't have to be perfect. The stitch, it being so open, you can hide mistakes a little bit easier. I chained 88 stitches in the beginning for my foundation chain, and each unit, like I was explaining before, is eight stitches, which means I have 11 units, and that is not evenly divisible by five, so we have to tweak it a little bit. I'll show you where I place my bobby pins, and you can adjust it based on the number of stitches in your foundation chain. So we're going to be placing five stitch markers along our skirt. So we're going to be placing our stitch markers on every other single crochet spot. So this is before we even start the 11th row. So we're going to go to the left. We're going to see that this is a single crochet and we're going to put a stitch marker there to signify that that is a place that we're going to increase. Then if we keep going along, we have a shell, another single crochet, but we're doing every other single crochet. So we're going to skip this one another shell, and then a single crochet. So again, we're going to put a bobby pin here. We're gonna keep going, shell, skip this single crochet, shell, place a stitch marker here, shell, skip a single crochet, shell, place a stitch marker here, shell, single crochet shell place a stitch marker and this is our fifth stitch marker all right so now as you can see we have a shell single crochet shell this is where we would put another stitch marker but since i only have five and i don't want to do any more increases than that i'm just going to leave this one as is so we're not going to be increasing at that spot and depending on how many units you have you can play around with around the circle how many you're going to skip or not. Some places you can skip every other. Another place maybe um, if you have more stitches, you can skip every two. But just make sure that it's as even as possible around the skirt. So now we have five bobby pins and then we're ready to do our first increase row. And we're only going to be doing three increase rows for this whole skirt. I'll explain how you're going to do that. So the previous row, we finished off with the rest of this shell, which means we're gonna start with a single crochet. So we're just going to single crochet, chain two, and then our next space is a single crochet and we have a bobby pin here, which means we wanna increase. Bobby pin always means increase. So we're gonna move that just for a second. Basically what we're gonna be doing is making two shells in this one single crochet space. And we're gonna separate those two shells by a chain three. So first we're going to 
do one shell. Same thing as the other shells that we've been doing. But instead of moving on from here, we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. And then we're gonna go back into that same space and do another shell. One, two, three. So as you can see in this one single crochet space, we have two shells separated by a chain three. We're gonna take our bobby pin that we took off and put it in the middle chain of the chain three. And that is just so we know where to increase the next time. So now we're just gonna continue on like normal. So I just did a single crochet at the top of that shell. This doesn't have a bobby pin, so we're just gonna do a regular shell. Chain two, single crochet. And now we're at another bobby pin. So we're just going to repeat that again. We're going to do a shell and separate it. Two, three. Separate it by a chain three. And then another shell. See, again, we have a shell, chain three, and another shell. And I'm just gonna continue to do the same thing. And we're basically just going to be doing that same increase at all of the bobby pins. Another bobby pin, another increase. So now we're back at the beginning of our row. I'm just going to slip stitch into the first single crochet to merge it all together. So now you can see at the bobby pins, we have little points and we're gonna offset that later on. It's also gonna kind of blend a little bit once we just start doing normal rows. But we're, like I said before, we're only doing three increase rows and I'll tell you when to do those rows. So now that we have one increase row done, we're gonna do four normal rows. And I'll show you how to work back into these increase spaces. This is how we're going to work back into our increase spaces so it works out evenly. Since we started the last row with a single crochet, we're gonna start this one with a chain four. And we're gonna do that partial shell like we've been doing previously. Chain two. And then looking at where we increased here, we have a spot where we can do a single crochet at the top of this shell. Then we're gonna do a lace shell in the middle stitch of the chain three that we've done. And then on the next shell, we're just gonna do another single crochet. So our first shell, we do a single crochet. Chain two. And then where our bobby pin is, we're just gonna do a lace shell. And again, the chain, it might be a little bit tricky to get into. And then we'll put our bobby pin back in the middle double crochet of the shell. So now you can see we've done a single crochet and a shell in the middle of the chain three space. Now we're gonna move on to do another single crochet in the next shell of that increase. Chain two. 
So technically when we're increasing, we're increasing by a whole unit and that just keeps it even. So it's always single crochet, then a shell, single crochet, then a shell and so on. And disclaimer, this is just how I kind of started to increase. I don't know if it's the right way or if there's a better way. So far it's been working out great for me and I think it looks good with this stitch, so keep that in mind. I'll show you one more time and then I'm gonna finish off these four normal rows. We have our shell. We're gonna single crochet into the middle stitch of the double crochet in the shell. Double crochet in the shell is so hard to say. <laughs> chain two as always. See, we have one, two, three stitches in the chain. We're gonna do a shell in the middle stitch. And I always just place my bobby pin into the second double crochet in the shell because eventually we will be doing another increase at that spot. Chain two, and then we have another shell that we need to do a single crochet in. And we should just be able to move on like we were before doing our regular shell rows. And the next couple rows goes as follows. So we just did an increase row. Our next four rows are going to be just normal rows, and when I say normal, I mean no increases. Then we're going to do another increase row, increasing at those stitch markers. Then four more normal rows, and then I will come back to you and show you what to do after that. This is the progress on the skirt. So what we've done since I last talked to you was we did that increase row. After that increase row, we did four just normal rows, working back into the increases that we did on the previous row. Then we did another increase row at the bobby pins. It should have been where the bobby pins are at a single crochet. So you increase the same way using the shell. And then we did four more rows. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna offset our bobby pins so it's not as pointed, and then we'll finish up from there. Quick try on. And this is how much yarn I have left. We're very close to being done. You can see how it's flaring out a little bit. This is the edge and this is the row that we're on. You can see that at the bobby pins, it's kind of like juts out a little bit. So what we're gonna do to offset that, we're just gonna be increasing in between these two bobby pins now. This might be a little tricky if you have a different amount of stitches. In between these two bobby pins, we have one single crochet, two single crochet, three single crochet. So we're really just gonna move this bobby pin into the middle on that second single crochet. So we're gonna take our bobby pin, just take it straight off, go one, two, and then put our bobby pin there instead. Now we'll move on to the next bobby pin. One, two, three, we're just gonna remove it, put it on the second one, and then we're just gonna repeat that all the way around. So one, two, three, take it off here, place the bobby pin here. And then this is our final bobby pin. So remember we had one space where we kind of just skipped. So what I'm gonna do for the last one is to go one, two, three, and increase here instead. Not that it matters, just make sure you offset it in some way. We're working in a circle, so it makes it a little bit easier to kind of increase freely. Um, you can't see it as much. If you have a different amount of stitches than I do, you can kind of play around with those numbers. Just make sure that they're offset evenly. So now we're gonna do another increase row, and since these are all at single crochets, we're gonna do the same exact increase that we did for the last two rows. It's the same exact process. I'm not gonna walk you through this one, but I'll put the timestamp where I started like the increases so you can go back to that and follow along. So we finished that increase row at the new spots. And as you can see, we have like a point here again, but like before, it'll smooth out as we do more just like normal rows. Now we're just gonna continue with the same stitch. I just want you to see this ridiculous filming setup. I'm crunched over on a pillow filming like this. Not that that matters, but I thought you guys would think that's funny. If you have any tips for filming overhead, let me know. Okay, this is the fun part where we just crochet. There's no more increases, unless you wanna do them, of course. I think I'll do like three to four rows. 
of just normal stitches. Depending on how long I want it to be, I'm just gonna finish up by making rows until it's the length that I want. You can play around with how long you want it to be, obviously. This is again where it'd be kind of convenient to have a tape measure if you were in public and you didn't wanna just try it on. We're just gonna keep going along and I'll check back in once I finish and then we'll do the drawstring and then we'll be done and we'll try it on and we'll style it and it'll be fun. I'm looking for something to watch, but I always go straight to Mina Lane. She just posted a new video, so I'm gonna watch it. It's more beautiful. The talented Mr. Ripley, vintage Ralph Lauren ads, and old. We did it in one, and I should have enough for the waistband, which is awesome. I think one skein of this yarn is like 296 meters or something. I'm gonna do the try on tomorrow because I'm feeling a little bit lazy. I don't know why I always choose to sit on the floor for some reason, but I finished. And this one's mine. I finally made something for myself, you guys. What do you think? After that increase row we did together, I just did four rows and that turned out to be the length that I wanted. So you can obviously make it longer or shorter, whatever you prefer. I didn't add a waistband. In this section, I keep saying waistband, but I mean like the drawstring that you weave through so you can tie a knot to make it tighter, if that makes sense. Because I wanted to add this bow here, and I also have some green sari silk ribbon that I could add too. Look how cute the blue and green are. I'm gonna put it on. The blue and green is actually really cute. What if I put the green and the gray one on and have it mismatched? This sari silk ribbon is expensive. Cute or no? I thought it would look weird if it had like a waistband with a tie in the front and then a bow as well. But I made one to add later and all I did for the waistband was I just did that stretchy foundation chain again. Just however you prefer to chain like long strings. I hate working back into like the initial chain, if you know what I'm talking about. That is my least favorite thing to do, which is why I always do the stretchy foundation chain now. But you can do whatever method works for you. And then just a little tip, before you weave this end in on your string, you can put it on a tapestry needle and then weave it into your skirt and it's a little bit easier to pull it through. I just weave in and out every inch or so and then like look how easy it is to pull through. So that's how I do that if you wanted to add a waistband. And that is what it would look like with the drawstring. You could weave a piece of fabric in there too if you wanted. It is all up to you, be creative. Oh my God, you could probably wear this as a top. So quickly, let's just recap everything that we did to make this skirt. First thing we did was we made a waistband by doing a half double crochet stretchy foundation chain. And we made sure that we chained in multiples of eight. Then we did two rows of half double crochets. You could have done more or less than that if you wanted to, depending on how you wanted your waistband to look. Then we did 10 rows of shell stitches, no increases. Our 11th row was an increase row where we increased at five points. Then we did four normal shell rows, another increase row at the same stitch markers, then four more normal rows. Then we offset our stitch markers, did another increase row, and then did four more just normal rows. And then we made the waistband and now it looks like this. Weave in your ends, but I think there's like four to weave in for this project. I think what people struggle with the most with this kind of stitch is how to increase. So now that you know how to increase, you can play around and do a little bit more freehand work. Maybe make this skirt again in a different length. I encourage you to be creative and try new things because that is how we learn. So I think I had more to say, but I forgot. Hi, it's me from the future. I'm editing this right now, and I think what I wanted to say was to please send me or tag me in any photos that you guys take of your skirts because I love to see what you guys make with my guides. It's like my favorite thing about sharing these videos with you guys. Um, so yeah, and of course I always appreciate the credit. I think that's all I wanted to say. Well, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, it really helps me out and it helps me make more tutorials for you guys. Follow me on Instagram if you'd like at miniguru.studios. You can DM me any questions there if you're confused. Like if you enjoyed this video or you made this skirt and comment how you would style it. Thank you so much, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one, bye.